Okay, so let's talk about um, the three levels of awareness. So we have unconscious mind. This is all the things that are happening back in the recesses that um, unless you've been doing the work, um, you're unaware of, that you're unconscious. It's, it's all the stuff that's um, kind of back there in the recesses and um, you might be able to access it, but uh, it's unconscious. We have pre-conscious, which are those things that you may not be thinking about right at the moment, but they can easily be, easily be drawn back into your mind. So, um, you know, most of the time we're not thinking about what we had for breakfast a week ago, but if we spend a little bit of time, we could, you know, track back, okay, last Friday I met so-and-so for breakfast at the restaurant, and I remember ordering the Eggs Benedict. And so it's pre-conscious. It's not deep into our unconscious. It's easily accessible because it's right there in maybe our recent memory. And um, so even though it's not in our conscious mind all the time, it's right there that we can access uh, with a little effort. And then, of course, we have the conscious mind, and that's what we're experiencing right now. Um, we're aware of it. It's immediate. Um, you know, right now, your conscious mind is listening to this master class, hearing me talk about uh, conscious, pre-conscious, and unconscious uh, awareness. And your mind might be thinking about how is all this going to apply to the NCE. That's your conscious mind. <laughs> You're probably not thinking about, until I say it, um, you know, what you have to do tonight uh, after work or after the kids get home. Um, that's all pre-conscious, except that I've just brought it up, and so now it's in your conscious mind. <laughs> so that's the three levels of awareness, unconscious, pre-conscious, and conscious. And so like uh, mentioned earlier with the goals of psychoanalytic theory, the goal is to bring to the conscious what has been unconsciously keeping us stuck. And the way that Freud would organize that is through the id, the ego, and the superego. So let's talk about those. And that's represented by this iceberg here. So we have the id, which is this pleasure principle. That's what drives the id. It is all about my needs being met right now. And the id is always unconscious. We're, we're not aware of that, that instinct that's happening. It's... <clears throat> It's deep down in the recesses of our mind, and it's what makes you want to do the things that you want to do. You're unaware that it's happening. It's just there. Um, the id is chaotic. It doesn't <clears throat> follow any rules of time. Um, it's just um, kind of immediate. Um, it's kind of like a, like a selfish three-year-old that wants what it wants when it wants it, okay? And so we have the superego, which is how we start to organize those instincts and categorize them into good and bad, for example. And so the id sometimes is compared to the little devil sitting on your shoulder, trying to tell you, you should do that. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great for you. It's going to satisfy you. The superego is saying, well, maybe not. It's the angel sitting on your shoulder. It's, it's the part of you that says, okay, maybe this isn't the best thing. Maybe it is an okay thing, but the superego is what's going to lead you to feel a sense of pride over making a good decision or a sense of shame or guilt over making a poor decision. A lot of times those categories are determined by cultural norms and what society says is right and wrong. Okay. So the superego helps to categorize the outcome into good or bad, working, not working, beneficial, not beneficial. Ego is based on the reality principle, which basically means that what you choose to do with that information. So our ego is, is the way that our personality shows up in response to feeling these senses of shame or pride, okay? When our ego is fully developed, um, we have a strong sense of who we are. It's not overinflated. It's not posturing. It's just content and functioning well based on what the parameters that the superego has set 
for ourselves.